Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody has a great weekend or had a great week or is having a great weekend enjoying this uh, unusually warm uh, seasonal uh, weird weather. Uh, you know, we've been having 70s, 80s and early 90s, low 90s now for about a week. Uh, just absolutely incredible here in New Jersey. So hopefully everybody is enjoying themselves. If you are new uh, to the broadcast and following for the first time. Thank you very much for your viewership. Please like, subscribe, and share uh, where we can get through this uh, journey one day at a time, one trade at a time with an unbiased uh, fashion. So let's talk about it. Uh, if you look at uh, the indexes last week, there's no way it's going to paint the picture. Um, you have the NASDAQ up three-tenths of a percent. Uh, you have the Dow and the S&P about, you know, S&P down uh, up a little bit less than a percent. You have um, the Dow up a little bit more than a one percent uh, for the week. But the the volatility and the random nature from Wednesday session to Friday was just something that I, I said in um, in the webinar. I I don't remember for you guys are just recent viewers of this channel. Uh, I'm going on my 24th year. I, I don't remember, uh, at least off the top of my head, I, I don't remember the last time I saw the Qs uh, lose the bottom of the range, close at the lowest range, the next day closed at the top of the range, okay? And then the following day, give up those gains for pretty much 85% of the day, only to rally back towards the close. So absolutely wild uh, scenarios, usually... Uh, I'm pretty good at reading what's going to happen the next day based on, well, sometimes it's just reality. When stocks close at the top of the range, you're probably going to get a lot of premium the next day to the upside. When stocks close at the bottom of the range, well, that's vice versa. But when you have a scenario of stocks going up and down, up and down, based on the previous day's close on the channel, then that sets up to be a really wild week, and that's exactly uh, what we had. So let's talk about it. Monday and Tuesday were pretty solid, right? Very solid. Uh, we had a scenario, uh, even on Tuesday, uh, Tesla broke down, uh, NVIDIA broke down, a lot of the semis to break down. And this is kind of what we want to start, you know, kind of start the week or kind of reviewing the week. And we had the lowest close. If you guys remember, we were talking about any close uh, below 313, right? We need 19 to the upside, 313 to the downside. That was the channels. That was the range. Uh, that the Nasdaq was trading in, and you know, on Wednesday's session, we came out with CPI. If you guys remember, uh, the the I believe the the mean consensus was 5.1 percent. CPI came in at five, and what happened was the Nasdaq exploded on the initial number, and the Nasdaq pre-market went from like 315 to almost 320, and in 15 20 seconds, as soon as they reclaimed that 319 channel. The market literally imploded. Like it was like nonstop selling into the close. And the range for that day was almost 320 pre market to where we closed at the bottom of the range, taking out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days in a row, nearly two weeks of buying action on one candle, setting up for what should have been, right? Should have been a confirmation to more downside selling the next day. The following day, right, came out PPI reading. Now, the PPI reading, the CPI reading, the ABC reading, everything else in between, at, at some point it gets, you know, too, just just too much. You know, it feels like there's data or a Fed speaker every 30 seconds of the day. So I, I didn't, excuse me if I didn't care about, you know, the, the amount of detail that was going to come out with the CPI, but the market did. And that's what we always talk about. It's not, you know, the actual data. It's not the actual news is how the market reacts to it. So Wednesday, the market completely sold off the data. Even though it was it, was, it came in uh, better than expected reading, the market completely sold off the data, closed it at the bottom of the range. The next day, we started to sell off a little bit, got a little bit stronger, and then we closed, literally closed, and fit cleaned up the whole gap that we lost the previous day to close at the top of the range above 319. Naturally, we should have gapped up, right? Naturally, 
right? Because again, we just closed the top of the range and we just engulfed the previous candle that engulfed, oh, by the way, the previous nine days. So logically, what does the market do? The market implodes at the open, right? We, we implode at the open and the queues go all the way down to like 315 and change. And you're like, what the hell is going on here? It's like, you know, what is absolutely happening that you don't have a, you know, you don't even have a reference point to even go back in the history and say, hey, I remember this. I saw this. Again, I don't remember, I don't remember a three-day sequence like this in a very, very long time. And what happened was the dip finally got bought. But this is after three, four consecutive lower lows. Just because the market just kept on taking out lows, taking out lows, taking out lows. And all the stocks, the majority of stocks that were super strong on the previous day were just losing their channels. Finally, the market woke up towards the end of the day. And you can see this pretty aggressive, you know, pretty aggressive move. Uh, back up towards the end of the day and almost reclaiming back that 319 channel and closing the candle green, which means the candle, the market closed higher than it opened. So just an absolutely insane week. Um, you had stocks going from breakout to breakdown, from breakdown to breakout. I, I mean, absolutely insane. And, and the one thing I always tell traders, usually I have a reference point. Again, almost 24 years is a long time. I've seen a lot of uh, I see a lot of sequences, a lot of news events, geopolitical, the whole, you know, the, run the gamut. But it's very rare that you've seen uh, stocks trade at the top of the channel, close at the top of the channel, close back at the bottom of the channel, close back at the top channel, break down lower only to reclaim back uh, the five-day moving average. But that's exactly what we had. And I get it. If, 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 if it confused me, right, if it confused me and I had really no answers to what was going on, or at least what we were seeing. You know, the pivots are pivots. You know, you're still going to find pivots uh, just because intraday cycles are going to give you opportunities. But if I can't really come up with an answer and say, hey, this is what's going on here, I get it, man. I sympathize with uh, the newer trader trading a year, two years, three years, because again, it was crazy. It was ridiculous. And the price action, as people say a lot of times, doesn't make sense. And my reply is usually, well, it doesn't need to make sense. Well, here is the ultra, you know, the ultra example of it doesn't need to make sense, but then here, here we are. And if you look at the final tally, you will never demonstrate how wild and crazy the market is. But when you look at the close, at the end of the day, the, the queues did reclaim back the five and the 10 day moving average going into Monday's session. So again, I think, right, I think you have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, right? And I say that with tongue in cheek, but that's kind of how uh, the last three days uh, have played out. Um, going, well, the more important part of, uh, kind of what we saw is not the data. I, when banks started reporting and obviously our earnings season is here, uh, banks started reporting on Friday, you had uh, Wells Fargo, you had JP Morgan and you had Citibank. Uh, like I was saying in the webinar before, uh, the bank earnings, if you look at all these stocks, you look at every bank stock, right? Prior to JP and Citibank and Wells Fargo. There wasn't a lot of excitement about the banks, right? Again, not even have anything to do with the bank failures uh, that we've seen the last month or so. I, I think there just wasn't a lot of enthusiasm going into the earnings season. The banks, there wasn't a lot of expectations. So I kept on reiterating the point. I, I, I felt unless they came out with something really horrific, like Citibank was going to say, I, we're closing our doors, right? I, I thought the, the reaction would be muted to positively up, uh, and that's exactly what we got. Again, I didn't anticipate this strong of a reaction, uh, especially J.P. Morgan. It was up almost 10 points. Uh, Citibank, strong, strong move here as well, up a couple of points. And you had Wells Fargo. Uh, you know, Wells Fargo actually had a gap in crap scenario, but their earnings uh, weren't that bad. So it, it's actually a good thing that the market is discounting. Uh, you know, kind of earnings, especially for the banks, uh, especially what we did go through uh, with the regionals only a, a month from now. But now this sets the tone to not that the data is out of the way. Now we're concentrating on earnings, at least for 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 the short term. Uh, for Monday's session, you have um, just kind of look at the, the calendar here. For Monday's session, you really don't have anything significant. Uh, Tuesday, we have uh, Netflix, right? Netflix comes out with earnings. On Wednesday, you have more bank, uh, you have, excuse me, on Tuesday, you have more bank earnings with uh, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, uh, but Netflix definitely kicks off uh, earnings for uh, high beta. And here's a weird, a very weird stock, right? I, I, you know, if we've seen some pretty big moves on Netflix uh, in the last several weeks, just out of nowhere. And, you know, one day it'll be up $14, the next day it'll be down 10 and you, you look and you're like, there's no news to, to, I mean, I think something internally is happening and I think the people who are in the know uh, are, are, are positioning that way, but it's just something is odd. I, I wouldn't be surprised 
Uh, if there is, you know, outside of earnings, and again, unless they come out with something on their uh, conference call on Tuesday, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of really major PR that's going to come out. It's very, very odd to see just random days, Netflix up 10 and then down 10. It just doesn't make any sense. But again, I guess we'll see uh, what's happening on Tuesday uh, Tuesday for earnings. Uh, this week, again, big big names. You got Wednesday, uh, you got Tesla. Uh, Tesla has been in uh, deep doo-doo, right? I think it's the best way of saying it. Uh, ever since the loss of 50-day moving average, the pre predominantly uh, strong days and expansion days have been uh, to the downside. The report on Wednesday, we saw a lot of insiders selling from Elon Musk's uh, brother. Okay, I don't know if that's going to, you know, it's going to result in anything going into earnings. Uh, but on the surface, this obviously is a bear flag. Obviously, if they come out with something really exceptional on Wednesday, and, you know, technicals are not going to matter. It's all going to be about earnings. But at least on face value going into Monday's session, we, I want to keep an eye on the bottom range here in Tesla because if it starts breaking down the bottom range, Maybe there, there's maybe there's a couple of days sell off before uh, they come out with earnings. But this is a very odd Monday going into because of the volatility, because of the price action, uh, both long and short or up and down. I don't even want to say long and short, up and down. Um, there's going to be a lot of disconnect within beta, which is very, very surprising. So, for example, when you look at AMD, right, AMD does not look great. OK, it just absolutely does not look great. Uh, it's just sitting here at the bottom of the range, did not rally back with any of those stocks. And then you could turn around, right? And then you turn around, for example, a stock like Google, right? And Google is looking phenomenal. It's probably one of the better uh, setups going into the week. Uh, you have NVIDIA, for example. Looked like it was about to fall off the, the, the earth this week. And then there was a Friday PR. And congratulations to all you guys who quit that sneaky pivot uh, from that uh, 265 60s. Nice little move. Uh, on the on the I guess Tesla Tesla PR uh, on Friday, but you could see here this thing was literally a day away from literally f losing the 20-day moving average, and that PR kind of saved it on Friday. Uh, you have, for example, again just to show you kind of a little bit of a disconnect, um, kind of a disconnect how you see on some uh, on certain charts here. Uh, let me give you guys another perfect example. Um, we have said Tesla, sh no Tesla looks weak. Look at a, you know, look at a stock like Lululemon. Lululemon has now been going through distribution mode um, for about three weeks now. Okay, I have to assume if the market holds up, and again, if there's if there's so many ifs now with all this uh, volatility, but if the market moves up here, you guys watch test uh, watch Lulu for the next couple of days. If this thing could finally get above these earnings highs and confirm, maybe you could finally start getting a two, three, four day. Uh, multi-day runner on the stock. It's it's been consolidating a little bit too long uh, than normal. But hey, if this thing finally starts waking up, and it did take out three days worth of selling here, if it finally wakes up and takes out the earnings high, maybe you could finally get a uh, next leg up. A couple of smaller price names I like. Uh, look at the stock skin. Right, this was uh, one that we mentioned a couple of weeks ago. Never confirmed, but this thing is starting to put in a long base. Uh, coming from February, very, very long base. If this thing just gets above this long base, I think it could finally wake up. Uh, ETNB, uh, another former runner, had a big, big, you know, four-day move, came back in. And if, you get, if you draw the trend line here, right, it broke its trend line here for the last couple of days. Keep an eye on this thing. If this thing can confirm the 10-day moving average, again, for all you guys who are brand new, the five-day moving average for me is short-term sentiment. And the 10-day, once it gets above the five, is called the birth of the trades, basically the, the birth of the short-term, um, the birth of the short-term potential run-up. So if it can get above the 10-day moving average, this thing has a lot of room. So uh, definitely keep an eye on that as well. So, you know, going into this week, uh, when we talk about you have to be prepared, you definitely got to be prepared. Uh, obviously, we want to watch uh, that 320, 30s level that was Friday's highs on the queues. Uh, you know, the market was ripping on Friday until that Michigan, uh, until that Michigan, uh, Michigan data that came out at 10 o'clock that really uh, reversed things. But if you, you looked at stocks from Thursday going into Friday session, after they gapped down, they had a strong rally, and the Michigan data did knock down a lot of them, only to recover the following day. So I think this is super duper important to to be uh, very very prepared on both sides of the market. Usually I say you know you know be prepared. I, I think I think you really you know have to emphasize that point going into Monday. I, I do want to give the bulls uh, the benefit of the doubt, but there's definitely some strong looking uh, sell sell patterns out there or sell uh, formations that if they do confirm, especially you know AMD, 
uh, or a name like Tesla. Again, we don't know if they will, but you have to be prepared for it. We can get some, uh, you know, some definitely good value on both sides. Uh, the big number on the queues going into this week, you have 20, uh, 320, 36. That was the top of Friday's channels. And then you have this area on March the 4th, highs of 321.60s. And if they finally get above that 321.60s, it should start another uh, leg up. And obviously, that's probably going to be complemented that uh, it complemented in between uh, all these uh, technology earnings. So Tuesday, we have uh, Netflix to kick off beta earnings. Wednesday, the highly once again anticipated uh, Tesla earnings, and then we will go on from there. But so far, good news is bad news. Bad news is good news and vice versa. So yes, is the market a little crazy right now? I think that's an understatement. But you know what? Usually these things will die down. Uh, organic op option flow, organic uh, equity flow, and everything else in between will start being uh, more uh, orderly. Okay, that's the best way we, we have to think of it. A again, always remember, guys, you sign up. Once you, once you invest your first dollar into the stock market, you just then signed up for a bull market, a bear market, a distribution market, a chop market, a supermarket, any type of market you want, you signed up for it. So you got to take the good, you got to take the bad, you got to eat it all, digest it, and hopefully something nice and shiny comes out of the other side of the end. Guys, have a great remainder of your Sunday. God bless. I'll see you all on the field tomorrow. Take care.